To use Smart Clip, all we need to do is to move our playhead over a clip in the timeline. Now all we need to do is to hit X key on the keyboard. This will automatically set an in and out point at the beginning and end of the clip that the playhead intersects. This, as you can see, is way much faster than if we were to set an in and out point manually for this clip. Now, once we have marked a clip in the timeline with in and out points, the next thing we can do is to replace it with a different clip. In our example here, we're going to replace it with the source clip that you see in the left hand viewer. From what we learned before, in cases like this, we can actually mark an in point in the source clip and see where that fourth out point is going to be. So I thought I would just bring that up, but we don't necessarily have to do this. So at this point, guys, all we need to do is to hit the F10 key on the keyboard. This will, as you can see, bring this new clip into the timeline and replace the clip that was here earlier. Just like that, this can be a very handy feature, especially if you want to quickly replace a clip in the timeline. And the best part is that it's very fast and easy to perform. In addition, this works for gaps too. So in our example here, all we need to do is to move the playhead over this gap and then hit the X key. This will set an in and out point for the gap. And then at this point, we can replace it with our source clip. So this can also be a great way to fill in gaps that you have in the timeline. One last thing worth mentioning is that when we have multiple tracks like this, things get a little more interesting. In our example here, if we try to mark the clip on the second track with in and out points using mark clip, you will see that the system actually cannot perform this correctly. And the reason being is that in cases like this, the system always looks at the clip at the lowest track, which the playhead intersects, and they use that clip to set the in and out points. But the good news is that we can get around this by turning off auto select for the lower track. Now the system will be able to perform as we expected. However, at this point, we still won't be able to replace the clip yet. So if we try to do that, you will see that the system will replace the clip that's on the lower track. And the reason for this is that we still have to turn on destination controls for the second tracks for both video as well as audio. So let's go ahead and do that. And once that is done, you will see that now the system will be able to work flawlessly. So that's just one caveat I want to call out. I hope this tutorial helps, guys, and uh, I will see you next time.